Hi, I'm Miss Maduka and this lecture will be looking at the body's response to stress. So we'll be looking at some key terms. Um, some of you may not have ever come across these terms before. Some of you may have or have completely forgotten. Um, the problem with um, this particular section, so the first section of stress, is that a lot of people originally get put off because of the long names or because they've never heard of any of these biological terms before but I want to show you exactly how easy it can actually be. Um, so this is lecture one with Miss N. Maduka. Okay so the first thing um, we're going to start looking at is the differences between acute or chronic stress. Obviously we all know what stress is. Um, stress is obviously very subjective towards each and every individual and it's based on our perceived notions of um, not being able to deal with particular stimuli around us. So we have two types of stress that you need to be aware of. Acute stress is short-term stress. That, that is things like examinations because it only happens over a very short period of time. Or another example of acute stress, for example, could be you walking down a street one day and seeing a big dog in front of you. Um, obviously, that's short-term stress because you're going to run away and the dog will eventually go. And then we have chronic stress, and this is basically long-term stress. So being a single mother, having to um, change the nappies of the quadruple children that you have in your house, and consistently they're sick, and then you have to work full-time, and a childcare, etc. You know what I'm talking about. So that is chronic stress. So very important, the differences between acute or chronic stress. Okay, so what we're going to be focusing on first of all is um, acute stress, short term stress, and we're going to be looking at this particular pathway. So please, please, please do not get put off by the name, yeah, because basically the pathway or the process of this particular section, acute stress, is in the name sympatho, which basically means the sympathetic nervous system, medullary means it basically stimulates the medullary gland and its pathway. So how it works. So sympatho medullary pathway, also known as, known as a SAM system, which is symp sympatho adrenal medullary. Um, you can basically break it down if you wanted to to just the SAM system. That's absolutely fine. As long as you know that this particular pathway refers to acute stress, short term stressors. OK, that's a little Barton Homer there. Obviously, short-term stress, he's done something and his dad wants to ch um, chase him. Okay, so what exactly happens to our body? So first of all, I, I quite like visual stuff, so please bear with me in terms of all my little cartoon characters and stuff of the symptoms. symptoms. So, we start off with um, the automatic, or in your textbooks it could have autonomic nervous system. So you don't really need to go in as much detail of what is the autonomic or automatic nervous system. Um, just little things, for example, that we do that doesn't require our conscious attention, for example, breathing or blinking. Yeah, these things that we just automatically do. OK, so that is part of our nervous system. Um, part of our um, aut automatic nervous system, we have two branches and this is what you do need to know for the examination. The first branch is here, the sympathetic nervous system. That could be abbreviated to the SNS. And the other branch is the parasympathetic nervous system. Again, that could be abbreviated to the PNS. Okay. Now, or oh, sorry, the PSNS. Yeah, so I just put parasymp parasympathetic nervous system. But you can, um, some books also have PSNS. Now, what you need to know is that the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for preparing our bodies for fight or flight. Yeah, so um, it gets our body ready. If our body wasn't ready, for example, if we saw a big dog in front of us, a big rockweiler, and our bodies just didn't do anything, we didn't respond to it, technically we're going to get hurt. So it, um, it prepares our body to deal with the situation at hand, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system, it brings our body back to a, a normal state, so the state it was in before we actually had the stimuli or the stressor in front of us, okay, so it just brings everything back to normal, so sometimes, you know, when you're um, in a fearful situation, you feel your heart start beating fast, so you start sweating, that kind of stuff, that is our sympathetic nervous system getting into gear, basically, okay, so two things you need to know, sympathetic, 
and parasympathetic nervous system. Easy as pie so far. Okay, I've just got a little example here. Um, um, I like using examples as well. So Homer's just caught Bart stealing a £50 note from his wallet. Bart's sympathetic nervous system would either prepare him to fight, that is stay and say he didn't do it, or flight, run away as fast as he can. And it's really, really good just to use different kind of examples. I just like cartoon characters, so I tend to use those kind of examples. But you can use any examples when you're trying to really explain um, quite difficult concepts. Right, so the first thing that happens is, so we have from our brain, yeah, a part in our brain called the hypothalamus, hypothalamus, it perceives the stressor, say it perceives the big rock while in front of us. The first thing that happens is the sympathetic nervous system gets activated straight away and a chemical called noradrenaline or in some places norepinephrine, I'm never allowed to say that, gets released straight away. Okay, so noradrenaline, first of all, so the first response, noradrenaline, a heart makes a heart start beating faster. We have more blood being pumped around the body at faster pay um at a faster pay pace. Um it actually makes our pupils dilate as well, and we just produce a whole lot more blood. This little picture here is just basically talking about the glucose levels, basically. Yes, we produce a lot more glucose because of the energy required to either fight or flight. Okay, so that's just um, a bit more information for you to read up on. Um, you can pause it, take down information for your notes. It's entirely up to you. Right, so why it's called, or why we call it the SAM system, the sympathetico adrenal medulla. Medulla. Right, so the SAM system, um, basically, why we call it the SAM system is first of all we need the sympathetic nervous system right here okay so you know originally when our hypothalamus from our brain perceives the stressor instantly the sympathetic nervous system stimulates the release of noradrenaline yeah that's the first thing we looked at next the, the second thing that happens is it activates or stimulates the adrenal medulla or medulla whichever one you want to call it and this is the inside of the adrenal gland okay so let's take a look at it first of all um most of us have two adrenal glands yeah which are situated on top of our kidneys okay that's the right adrenal gland and that's the left adrenal gland and this picture here is basically a, um, across a cut selection a cut section of the adrenal gland so the medulla is always going to be the inside of the adrenal gland and the cortex is going to be the outside okay so that's all you need to know part of the adrenal gland the medulla is what we deal with when we're looking at acute stress first of all okay so let's go back so this is our sympathetic nervous system. So we've already released noradrenaline. So what happens next? It stimulates the adrenal medulla, which is the inside of the adrenal gland. And then that releases adrenaline. Yeah, our stress hormones. OK, so that comes out that that gets released from our adrenal medulla. Very important. You know the locations. So the effects of adrenaline again more glucose being produced we have more oxygen to the brain and it kind of suppresses our digestive system because let's face it um we actually don't need to be using our digestive system at all when we're running away from something really really scary so it kind of like cuts out it's when people pee their pants and all sorts of stuff okay so you can um if you don't like visual stuff you can use this to take your notes So that is why really it's called the sympathetico or sympatheto. Yeah, so different textbooks say different things. So that's why we call it the sympatho. Yeah, that's part of the sympathetic system. Medullary, part of the um, adrenal medulla pathway. Yeah, so it just adds these things together. So that is. 
the acute response to stress. And now let's take a look at the chronic response to stress. And this system is known as the pituitary adrenal system, or some textbooks would call it the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. The H hypothalamus is just basically, it's, in part, it's a part of the two systems, basically. So that is acute and chronic. It just means the hypothalamus is the thing that knows and perceives the stressors. Right, so let's take a look at this particular pathway. All right, so Marge over there basically is getting really, really stressed because she has to deal with all of this, Maggie and all the shopping and her husband's not helping her. So the first step is the hypothalamus perceives the stressor and goes, oh, Marge is obviously going through quite a bit of stress. So the starting point is the hypothalamus. And then what the hypothalamus does is it activates a part in our brain called the paraventricular nucleus, or abbreviated to PVN. And from this section of our brain, we release a chemical called CRF, which is corticotrophin releasing factor. Okay, so that now gets released. And this now stimulates pituitary gland, which is responsible for releasing hormones. Okay. And the main hormone that gets released is a hormone called adrenocorticotrophic hormone. So ACTH. You're allowed to just use ACTH. And the ACTH stimulates, remember the adrenal glands? If you don't remember it, go back on this, um, on this recording. So it stimulates the adrenal cortex, which is the outside of the adrenal gland. And from there, cortisol sorry i keep i keep meaning to change this it should be sol so cortisol should actually be released okay and cortisol is our chronic stress hormone just like with our um acute stress pathway it was adrenaline and noradrenaline would be the main hormones there okay now let me go back for those of you who don't like all the big names you can get away with just saying the hypothalamus stimulates a pituitary gland which then produces or releases ACTH then it stimulates the adrenal cortex and then that releases cortisol yeah so you don't actually really have to talk about the PVN or CRF if you don't want to remember too much but try to remember it but if you don't you can get away with just doing it that way so hypothalamus pituitary um, gland, ACTH, adrenal cortex and cortisol because those are really the main players. Okay and finally um, it's a bit about the hypothalamus you can pause it and use that in your notes if you need to and these are the main chemicals again as well so pause it as well um, to take your notes in this section so I've just given you the main the main um, players and finally what do we need to know about cortisol? S-O-L, by the way, typo. Well, it's not typo. I've done it too many times, but it's cortisol. Right, so the positive effects of cortisol, it, it does give us a quick burst of energy, yeah, um, and it lowers our sensitivity to pain. So basically, we feel like we're superwoman or supermen, and we can do absolutely anything in this world. Yeah, we can keep going, keep bringing it on, bringing it on, bringing it on. Now, the negative effects of cortisol is eventually have you felt that those times when you probably go upstairs or go downstairs and you actually can't remember why you went upstairs or went downstairs in the first place that is our thinking our, it's, it's kind of impaired basically because we have too much of this um particular hormone going through our systems cortisol so too much not too good um it, it raises our um, blood pressure because um our blood pressure is it needs to be continuously be pumping around our body because we know about the stress response basically and yeah so it's not good for our blood pressure and and it weakens our um, blood vessels and all sorts of stuff and finally it lowers our immune system and with a lowered immune system we have more we're more susceptible to getting an illness yeah and that's what we're going to be looking at in the next section and that's a bit of information about the feedback um system so it does regulate itself and obviously if cortisol rises too high in our system basically then it just our body just naturally reduces the amount of ACTH and CRF in our system okay so that is the first part so those are two systems that we um, we just looked at make sure you go back look at it again make sure you fully understand I'll see you in the next section bye bye